This is episode 100. We have just driven all the way from Canada to Argentina, all the way to the bottom at the end of the road. And we are now preparing the Albatross, our defender, for the next shipment to Australia. We are Nick and Mathilde. And in 2022, we left everything behind to travel the world with our Land Rover Defender. Europe, the Americas, Australia, Asia and Africa, we want to see it all. This is day 639 and we are in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Welcome to the next Meridian Expedition. Let's start with a little recap of life lately. Over the last 18 months, we drove all the way from Canada to Alaska through the entire length of the Americas to Ushuaia, Argentina. A long journey, but not the end for us. We have a world tour to complete. Next up, Australia. But shipping a vehicle to Australia is not that simple. In this episode, we take on that challenge. Shipping to Australia is one of the hardest countries to get into with your own vehicle and we now have 10 days to prepare this albatross to get into this container. 10 days to clean a car! That might seem a bit over the top. But Australia has a unique flora and fauna that the country protects with uniquely strong biosecurity laws. And Nick will explain what it means concretely for us. Australia needs the car to be soil free, seed free, plant free, bug free, everything free. This car has been traveling from Canada to Argentina through off roads, dust, mud piles, rivers, deserts, very high mountain peaks. I mean, it's gone through everything. So there is probably sand from two years ago still somewhere in one of the corners. Why is it scary? Because if there's anything that they find at the customs in Australia, because they're going to go through it very thoroughly, well then they put it into a quarantine and then they're going to clean it, but you don't know when they're going to clean it and each day has a storage fee and it can get very expensive very quickly. This is day one and we have to start with everything, meaning removing everything from Albatross, everything into the Airbnb, uh, and then once everything is removed from the car, then we're going to start unmounting everything that's annexed on the car that's kind of sticking out, like the jerry cans, the sand ladders, the tables, uh, the bonnet bag, all these things. Uh, Tom is here as well with us. And uh, it's going to be a nasty but long job as well. So the clock starts now. We have six days to finish up everything. Seats. Welcome to the ballroom. Ta -da! Let me show you how the Airbnb look now that we removed everything. Our bed, our table, another piece of furniture of Jerry, our fridge, elbow furnitures, and then it gets worse in the bedroom. We have another huge piece of furniture of Jerry, amateur seat, and just chaos. Actual, pure chaos. We did inform the Airbnb owner that we were going to do that, so we'll put everything back in place and clean. But at the end of day one, I don't know if I feel advanced or just more in chaos. On the road, we religiously clean the inside of the car every day to make sure our small home stays clean. But we have no control on the amount of dust and other things accumulating in the back of furniture and seats. It was not disappointing.
This is day two of preparing our car for Australia. We're gonna pull out the toothbrush, start scrubbing every little corner, get every little bits and pieces and dirt and mud and everything out of the interior at least. Day two, let's go. Day two. Boom. Shampooing all of this, so the speakers, all that, the vents, everything under here, all under there. All of this with just the toothbrush, like that. Even cleaning under the stereo, so we remove the stereo system. And we're just getting all the dust out, and you can see these are dead. These are dead. Hey, what's your tea here? Looks good. Mm. Mm. Yeah, black tea. That is the kind of bad stuff we can't have in the car for the shipment. Talk about finding a needle in a haystack. So today we finally finished going through all the little bits and pieces, so like in here, to get all the mud out. And then I had to remove a bit of carpet and we'll super glue this back. But there was mud all in here. Same thing on the there. How's it going? Great. I think the value of a toothbrush in a deep cleaning project is highly undervalued in the general knowledge. So buy your toothbrush to clean stuff. Nice. Today's day three of cleaning. The good news is that the inside of the car is mostly spotless. Yeah. Today then it's all engine and chassis. So Mathilde, you're on the engine and I'm in the chassis. Oh yeah. Oh, you ready? Yeah. I've never been that ready. But I would love to be able to sit in the middle of it. I don't know why they don't have a seat for mechanicians. <laughs> we should suggest that. Yeah. Oh, poor albatross. Everything is coming off. Because here, all of those bugs, that's a no-no for Australia. We can't buy flight tickets for all the bugs in this car. Nope. <laughs> to speak, radiator, and a lot of time. to clean Nick as much as we clean the car in this condition shoot what I'm thinking when I see you is that okay your eyes are protected yeah. but now you have to open your mouth to breathe yeah. and this thing is full of fog so I can't see anything <laughs> hey Mathilde where are you I'm here oh god nope not in here maybe in here Oh, found you, saw your hand. Show me your hand again. There you are. Hello. <laughs> are you one with mud now? I'm one with mud and I'm one with elbow now. We have the kiwi. <laughs> so that is true, the rumor is true. People in New Zealand walk upside down. Yeah, that's the only <laughs> way. <laughs> oh, and Mary is getting there. It doesn't seem to be when you get under here. No, it's not visible, but it will be. <laughs> Day four and five were just a succession of miserable cleaning sessions, leaving a shining chassis, but our hands swollen and hurt. And I introduce you Ushraya. It's the cat of the landlord of this house that decided to enjoy the time with us during the past four days. Today is day six. In 10 minutes, we finish the engine. 
top and bottom, that's awesome. Then we put all the shelves back into Albatross and we probably start cleaning the battery compartment and do a tire rotation and change the rear brake pads. So normally all of this happens today, fingers crossed. Day six felt like progress as we could finally start putting back furniture. But that's also when you realize that while the car is impeccable, everything going back in should be too. And with that realization came another full day of work, as we also learned that Australian customs had specific requirements for all of our equipment. Nick will explain a bit more what this is about. Now, Albatross doesn't look like it normally does. It's super messy and everything is empty. The reason being is that everything has to be itemized. So you have to write a list with exactly every single thing that you have in the car. So we've got batteries, we've got spoons, we've got clothes. Anything that you can think about that is in this car has to be written on a piece of paper and properly labeled on one of the boxes. Luckily, it was about the same moment when our Swiss friends Dario and Vanessa that you've seen in previous episodes came along to help. And we were now five people on deck to help finish up the preparation of the two defenders. So Tom has to be ready for tomorrow. So everyone is on deck to help him being ready. We have one more day, so we should be fine. Tom, are you managing a whole team? A whole team? What kind of awesome. doing things now without asking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they work well, huh? Ace team. Oh. And then that there you go. Cool. <laughs> Dario and Vanessa joined us for for the night, maybe for two nights, and they brought dinner, which is taco night, steaks, tomatoes, onions, blue cheese, avocado, and a little bit of this sauce, which I'm not sure what it is, but it's amazing and reunited again all together, which is perfect. And it's the best gift after six days of cleaning. Oh my god! Yes. <laughs> so good. And cheers, five days everybody! Of driving. <laughs> Taco cheers. Yeah. Taco cheers! Taco cheers! Taco cheers! Taco cheers! Taco cheers! <laughs> <laughs> Today is day eight, and it's the day we say goodbye to Tom. He's going to cross the border to Uruguay via ferry and then drop the car off tomorrow at the port of Montevideo to ship back home. So it's the end of the road for Tom. One out of this continent. <laughs> Two left. <laughs> Two left. <laughs> We're next to the new guys. Yeah. Nick is reinstalling everything inside and it starts looking like, like Albo again. Yeah, overlanding Albo again. Oh, nice. oh wow. Looking good. And the Airbnb is spotless, the car is packed with all our stuff. And also spotless. Also spotless. What's on the program today? Today we're getting the chassis painted and it's, it's also a way for us to come with a brand new chassis and Australia gonna be like, wow, that car's so good. <laughs> that is a brand new repainted chassis. Why did we paint the chassis? That's because in Argentina it's actually really well priced for doing such a job but secondly also it gives off a brand new vehicle and it might show the customs that we really put a lot of effort and they might just turn an eye and be like okay I'll let this car pass. The chassis paint is done and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Look, 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 look. <sighs> Isn't it gorgeous? Whoa! <laughs> absolutely satisfying. And while we're at it, a new license plate is going on to Albatross. Vamos! This is where we put the memory of the old license plate. Ah. 
We have just left Argentina going to Uruguay, country 27 I think. And beautiful day, beautiful sun, and a pretty cool way out of Argentina through the port and the old boats. We crossed the estuary of Rio de la Plata, separating the Argentinian capital of Buenos Aires with Uruguay. Welcome to Uruguay! Uruguay! There, we were hosted by the very kind and generous Federico, who invited us to his place and stored albatross in one of his containers as we waited a loading time at the port. He showed us around the superb city of Colonia, where he lives, and made us the honor to put the flag of Uruguay on Albatros, as it is tradition. We are here with uh, Federico, who has been hosting us for the past practically three days, four days. Oh, oh, this, yes. And amazing Federico also has a container, which we've been able to put the Albatros in. And you are a, a sailor, you used to be sailing a lot, racing and everything. Yes, I love the sea, but I also love... Um, for wheel driving yeah. and uh, I admire people <laughs> as you that yeah. uh, takes uh, such an adventure. Thank you very much. And, and you've done a loop of the US with a jeep already, yes, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's a great honor that <laughs> Martinda and Nick are giving me and res responsibility also. Also, yeah. Thank very you. much. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And with that, the albatross was officially ready for the port. Obviously, we drove with plastic bags around the shoes to be sure we were not dirtying anything. At that point, you hand over all of your trust into your shipping agent. Nick will talk us through the role of the shipping agent. Now, how does it work in terms of getting agents to ship your car? How does it work with containers picking a shipping line? A lot of agents you can contact. Uh, you can find them on Google. There's always the classics like IVSS, Seabridge and others. Uh, usually, you contact multiple of them, get a quote, try to see who's got the best offer, who is the most professional that really knows how shipping works, that has the best answers for you and usually go with them. From Uruguay to Australia, the Uruguay part, there's an agent that manages this part and you pay him for the management of your vehicle into the container and loading onto the ship and the ship fee. And then you need a handler that picks out the container when it arrives at destination. And usually the Uruguayan agent and the Australian agent know each other and they talk mm. to each other and that process is sort of all handed over to you. On this video, we only focus on the Uruguayan side. We will do a full video on the Australia arrival when we get there. And time has come. We're now at the port in front of our container. The container is just over there. And we are removing the last little pebbles out of the tires. Brought a little rag and we're just with a little water and we're just gonna of this once the car's in the container. up in the front and the back and now Nick is disconnecting the batteries it's a bit narrow but it works next up the anti-humidity things we got a bunch and we're going to put them all around that's because 45 days at sea or more we'll be getting tons of mold and so hopefully that way albatross will stay clean Yeah, God, it's done. And we're sweating. It's really warm. Goodbye, Albo. Ooh. That's weird. It happened like this, and all of a sudden it's locked behind gates. We made it, Juan. <laughs> okay, so in very very short, what you need to do a few months before you ship, contact the different agent brokers, get quotes. 
pick the one that has the best price and the one that seems most, most professional. Ask them everything you need to do before shipment. Mostly they'll tell you it needs to be kind of clean. Australia needs to be very clean, crazy clean. Once you have that information, they'll make you fill out paperwork and make you pay a prepayment. Uh, that depends where you're shipping. In our case, there was a prepayment. So you bring your vehicle to the ship, you make sure that everything is sort of clean, and then you put it on the boat, you leave the keys behind, goodbye then there's an app called marine tracker ship tracking which you can follow your vessel so that you can keep looking at it like oh cool it's getting to destination once you have a destination you will be handed over to your other agent which will be given to you by the first agent which you shipped with normally and then he will make you fill out more paperwork go oh, that's kind of that's kind of the whole process and uh the hardest part would be the cleaning and getting the right agent and understanding all the paperwork but honestly it's not that difficult you can do it now, surely I missed out some topics. If you are interested or you have questions, just leave them in the comment section below or send us a message on Instagram. We'll be happy to help. And you will see us next week in Brazil as we take time off after 10 days of getting blisters and swollen fingers from all the cleaning. And we'll just be enjoying some Brazilian time, the Rio Carnival, before going home. So see you next week in Brazil. And you see you in Australia. And hopefully you make it without any problems. Fingers crossed, Albatross will be clean enough. Boom! Albatross has been left in the container. He's gone! Australia next stop! Gone! At least it's a whole weight of stress that just gone. And now we just have to wait a month and a half until Albatross reaches uh, Perth. Yeah, and in the meantime, we are gone. We're gone. Peace! Mission accomplished. You can find the full details on our shipment to Australia on our Patreon, the costs, the Australian customs and what to expect. There is also a link to follow our container all the way there. On Patreon, there's also a lot of details on all types of topics where we give you the answers on a wide range of overlanding subjects. Go check it out. And in the meantime, until next week in Brazil, take care. This. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't listening. I wasn't listening. No, no, no. It's because it's because your jerry can was like tong tong tong. Oh dong. shit! Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. So I was like about to start. I was like, there's a lot of noise here. <laughs> Don't get carried away, guys. We are carried away. <laughs> it's its tactic. Pushy. Pushy. The best part of the access of the port is that they give you those badges. They take a picture at the entry, but I don't really know how they're supposed to recognize me with this picture. Not too bad, but a bit blurry, no?